inside an impenetrable fortress. Never in my life would I think that anybody would be able to get out of there. Two men's impossible dreams. You cannot tunnel out of Danamora unless you have a jackhammer. Meet two unlikely partners in crime. Together, they attempt the unthinkable. Escape Danamora. Who would even try to escape this impregnable fortress? A remorseless killer named Richard Matt. Richard Matt is a career criminal and ruthless killer. In 1997, Matt kidnapped 76-year-old William Rickerson, his former employer, threw him in the back of his vehicle and proceeded to drive around for approximately the next 27 hours, stopping repeatedly to torture Rickerson in an attempt to extort money. When this failed, out of frustration, Matt simply broke Mr. Rickerson's neck and using a hacksaw, dismembered his body, disposing of it in the Niagara River. Richard Hacksaw Matt has been trapped behind the walls of Danamora for the last seven years, and he desperately wants out. He needs help, but who can he trust? Only one man comes to mind, David Sweat. David Sweat was incarcerated at Clinton Correctional Facility as a result of his involvement with the murder of a deputy sheriff. Sweat has been in Clinton for 12 years, but he's been in and out of prison most of his adult life. He's picked up some valuable skills in prison woodworking shops and working as an electrician's assistant. He also happens to be Richard Matt's neighbor in the cell block. Sweat and Match search for any weakness in the prison and they come up with a plan that might just work. They will remove their cell doors, sneak out of the cell block to the industry yard, and climb over that portion of the massive perimeter wall. The first step of that plan is to remove the lock on the cell door. To do that, they need a specialized security screwdriver bit known as a Torx. But they don't have access to any tools. They must find someone who can get them what they need. Richard Matt, always scheming, knows just who to exploit. The civilian supervisor of the tailor shop where he works, Joyce Mitchell. Joyce has a weakness, his buddy, David Sweat. I noticed many interactions with Joyce and David Sweat. They would go in the back room to count material but Eric isn't the only one who notices David Sweat and Joyce Mitchell would disappear from the workroom for extended stretches. Somebody wrote a note stating that he was having sexual relations and disappearing into the back material room with Joyce. So with that, he was removed. That's when Richard Matt Hacksaw moved in. Joyce knows Matt is friends with Sweat and uses him to pass messages. Richard Matt now sees his opening. He doesn't risk asking for the talk spit right away. Slowly but surely, Matt asks for more and more and more. But to ask her for a talk spit, Matt needs leverage, something he can blackmail her with. The next thing he asks for is some nudes. And she does. She sends pictures of herself. Matt now knows Mitchell will get them the talk spit. Joyce gets the right size Torx bit and gives it to Richard Matt. When he returns to his cell, he hands them over to Sweat, who sets to work trying to dismantle the cell door lock. David quickly finds out this isn't working. He's trying to fiddle with it. It's not happening. He can't get the cell door off. Time to come up with plan B. So David sees that there's a vent at the back of his cell behind his bed. And he knows that he, if he cuts around that vent, it leads to the catwalks. To access the catwalks, Sweat's going to need something to cut out the vent behind his bed. So they went to plan number two, which was the smuggling in of hacksaw blades that Joyce Mitchell had purchased at the local Walmart store. This hacksaw blade would be split between inmates Matt as well as inmates Sweat. After three weeks of sawing, David Sweat finishes cutting his way out of his cell. The lights go out, and David 
leaves. The big turning point was when they came across a steam pipe that basically told them one was the incoming steam, one was the outgoing steam. All this time, they've been working away next to a steaming hot pipe. But today, for the first time, the pipe is cold. The prison heating system is off of the summer. This could be their way through. They knew that if they were able to breach into that pipe, then they would simply breach on the other side of the perimeter wall to freedom. Cutting 10 inches a night, David finishes the first hole. So when David's cutting into the steam pipe, he has to then crawl through that hole and pop out another part of the steam pipe, which means he has to cut his way out once he is inside the pipe. David makes his last cut. For the first time since he arrived at Clinton Correctional Facility in 2003, he's about to venture outside his perimeter wall. He located a manhole cover, and he was able to go up the ladder from the sewer, prop the uh, lid open. He goes out of the manhole, he looks around, and he says to himself, this is perfect. Tonight will be the night. From what Joyce tells me, that day, he looked at her and he raised his fist in the air as if to say, we've done it. And she knew in her heart that this was the signal. Mitchell is to meet them at midnight with her SUV. It's time. They exit the back of their cells, shimmer down the pipes, make it through the brick wall, and get to the cut steam pipe. David's sweat goes through just as he did the previous night. Now, for the first time, Richard Matt crawls into the pipe. After a long struggle, Matt finally makes it through. David popped his head out of the manhole. No sign of Joyce. What David Sweat and Richard Matt don't know is that Joyce Mitchell has cold feet. In fact, she has checked herself into the hospital for a panic attack. Matt is baffled. He cannot believe Joyce has not shown up. And Matt says, there's no way I'm going back to my cell. Let's get out of here. Without a plan B and without a getaway car, they head for the surrounding mountains. They've escaped Danamora. They have a five hour head start. And now they have to escape a manhunt. The entire upstate region of New York State is in a panic that two dangerous murderers are on the loose. As the authorities search for David Sweat and Richard Matt, they are hiding out in the woods, breaking into unoccupied hunting cabins along the way. At some point, David Sweat and Richard Matt decide to split up. On June 26th, 21 days since their escape, the authorities finally catch up with Richard Matt near a hunting cabin. My father knew he was either going to get captured or that they were going to kill him. He knew this was the end and he had a gun on him and he raised that gun. And naturally, the officers doing their job, they had to fire it. And come to find out that gun was empty. So my father knew that if he raised a gun, it was almost choosing death by cop. So it was almost his invitation for them to shoot. Two days later, on June 28th, David Sweat is found by an officer near the Canadian border. David refuses to stop when the officer yells for him to surrender. So he took careful aim and squeezed off one round. A bullet struck Sweat in the upper torso. Sweat stumbled but did not fall and kept running. Sergeant Cook squeezed off another round. The second round also hit Sweat in the upper torso. Backup was nearby and immediately entered the field, applying first aid and effectively saving David Sweat's life, ending the 23-day manhunt. 
Through cunning, coercion, ingenuity, and hours of tedious work, Richard, Matt, and David Sweat managed to do what no one believed possible. They escaped the confines of these walls. But the chain of events that made their escape possible was only as strong as its weakest link. When Joyce Mitchell failed to pick them up on the night of June 6, 2015, their fate was sealed. Joyce pleaded guilty to promoting prison contraband and criminal facilitation. She was fined $86,000 and served more than four years in prison. Richard Matt's determination not to die in jail cost him his life. And David Sweat, he's still serving his life sentence. But now, he's moved from prison to prison every few years, as they often find him planning his next escape. 